A new AI image generator just launched called Higgsfield Popcorn, and people are already calling it the Nano Banana Killer. Stay down, fruit. Movie night belongs to popcorn. This got my attention, so I spent 10 hours testing it to see what it's actually great at, who should use it, and when it beats the competition. Here's the reality. AI image tools aren't optional anymore. They're essential for business growth. The question is which tools solve which problems. Hicksfield Popcorn claims to solve the biggest pain point in AI content creation, character consistency across multiple frames, product campaigns, Instagram carousels, video storyboards, anywhere where you need the same person or product across multiple different shots consistently. This is where Hicksfield shines. It's not only an AI image generator, it's really an AI storyboard generator. Plus, it integrates directly with Sora 2 and VO 3.1 and all of the latest AI video models, so you can storyboard scenes and convert them straight into videos. I can even swap my face with any other person with Higgsfield face swap and put myself in images that I'm actually not in. So this complete production pipeline is super powerful. And to not waste your time, here is what we'll cover in this video. I'm going to show you exactly my test of the last 10 hours and what I actually think Think about this platform. I'll talk about all of the aspects where I think Higgsfield Popcorn wins, walk through the complete workflow for creating character consistent product ads, I'll share my honest opinion on where I actually use this tool versus where I'm using other tools, and I'll share with you my expert frameworks for getting the best results. So I'm talking about the prompting strategies, the reference selection methods, and the specific settings that matter. Plus, I'm sharing some of the exact systems and frameworks that I'm using in order to monetize this tool right now. Let's get right to it. Using Higgsfield Popcorn is super straightforward. Simply click on the link in the description and you'll be led to this page where you can try popcorn for free. If you don't already have a Higgsfield account, you can sign up right here. And if you're already making other Higgsfield content, simply navigate to the popcorn tab. But before I show you the storyboard feature, let me first show you another feature that is super powerful and it's called Higgsfield Face Swap. It allows me to swap my face onto any other image. Let me show you how to do that first and then I'll show you how you can create storyboards. Once you're on Higgsfield, click on image. Down here is a new feature called Face Swap. Click on image and click on face swap. Down here, you can now select your own photo and I'll select this one. Now we can have some fun with this. Let's try this out with Zac Efron and then Donald Trump and we'll see how my face looks overlaid onto their personas. Let's use this image here. And just for the fun of it, let's also try it with this one. Go back to Higgsfield and select the target image. Here's Zac Efron and generate this. Let's try this one as well. Let's also imagine ourselves as a bodybuilder and hit generate. Let's look up an image of young Donald Trump. I'm wondering if it can copy the style and keep the bird consistent. Let's upload the shot right here. Click generate. Now let's review our face swap. First up, here is me as Zac Efron on the Today Show. This looks pretty good. Here's me in a surf rush guard, and it actually nailed my facial expressions. Here is me as a bodybuilder, and here's me as a young Donald Trump, but somehow I'm having a bird in my hand. I'm not sure what's up about that, but it gets even better. Let me walk you through how to use the story feature. Simply navigate to the popcorn tab. As you can see here, the interface is super straightforward. We can upload up to four images to guide or extend the storyboard. Then we can describe the method or action to create in your scene. And this is where AI will take your prompt and generate different storyboards. However, you can also select manual mode where you can describe exactly what you want to happen in each scene and it still uses your reference images as guide. For this first example to showcase, I want to see if it's able to generate a thumbnail for this very video. Let's click on the upload tab, upload a reference image of me looking shocked, upload the Higgsfield icon as well as a nano banana. I'll give it a prompt describing what I'm trying to do. And you can pause this video right here to copy this prompt, but I'll also leave that in the description. And don't worry, towards the end of this video, I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to improve your prompting for Higgsfield pop. Popcorn. Then I'm going to select five results. Keep in mind, you can generate up to eight results if you just have one reference image selected. But if you already use up to four reference images, you can only generate four results. In this case, since we uploaded three, let's go with five results. And then you can click on generate for free. We can try this again and go into manual mode. And here we can describe in scene one exactly what we have here. And in scene two, we're going to do a slight modification of this. The concept should have the person in image number one looking excited. Let's click on generate for free. And as you can see here, in the same project, we're generating two storyboards, one in the manual process with the three images and one in the auto process. If you want to generate this in different formats, for example, if you want this to be a thumbnail for YouTube short or for your Instagram, you can click on 16 by nine and we can try to regenerate the same thing. I would recommend you to adjust the prompt so that it's perfectly tailored towards your short form content and vertical. But in this case, let's see what it comes up with just with the original prompt. Let's click on generate for free. And here we have it. Follow my instructions. My face on the right looking shocked and on the left hand side on all of these images, we can see the comparison. Now here's something noteworthy. As we can see, it followed my instructions very precisely, but where Higgsfield actually shines is if you give it broad instructions. So instead, I'm going to go back to auto now and just going to give it very broad instructions. And as you can see, I'm not giving specific instructions and we'll see how it handles that. 
Let's click on generate again. And as it's building this, let's analyze these images. This is already a very good split screen. We can see here is the popcorn with Hicksfield. Here we can see a rotten banana. And here we have another one with the rotten banana and the popcorn. This one did not turn out too well in my opinion, so I'm gonna delete this. And in this one, we noticed that the popcorn is spelled wrong. This is actually one of the limitations that I noticed is that with text, sometimes it's still struggling a bit. However, in just a second, I'll show you how you can clean that up if it gets the text wrong. This one is great. I think this would perform well as thumbnail, but the logo doesn't seem to be fully integrated. So we will fix that up in a second as well. In the meantime, here in my manual instructions, you can see that the versus is between me and the popcorn, but I do love this concept idea with, with the popcorn, me looking excited versus me looking shocked. And this is actually a perfect example of being able to change character expressions and character emotions. And these ones actually turned out pretty well. I like how it fit me in the shot, even though it's in the 16 by 9 vertical mode. And here are now the images that it came up with on its own. This is a great split screen between Nano Banana and Hicksfield Popcorn and me looking shocked in the middle. This is actually a good one. I like the idea of having these two on the same screen, but I don't like the middle part of this. So we will clean that up in a second. So out of all of these, I do like this one a lot. So let's go into this one. And now we can go in here and we can click on edit. This is where Hicksfield really shines because you can use Hicksfield Popcorn not only as a storyline generator, but also as an editing tool. Check this out. So in this shot, I like the Hicksfield logo and the Nano Banana here. We can now change specific images about this. For example, we can click on the edit symbol and we can paint this in and we say, remove the graphic that is currently selected and instead put a big letters VS and click on generate. And down here on this symbol, you can select which model it's using. So if you still want to use Nano Banana for image editing, for example, you can simply put that right here, say Nano Banana Edit. And you can describe this now just how you would with any other AI image uh, editor. And let's regenerate this to see what it comes up with. And here is the result. We came up with a concept on the storyboard AI generator, and then we refined it further within Hicksfield, and we were just able to make the changes within a minute. Hicksfield Popcorn is great to come up with ideas and different iterations of certain concepts. And even if it doesn't generate a perfect image on the first shot, you can edit it and refine it within Hicksfield and use different models to iterate on it and use popcorn as an idea generator for you to then refine and further develop into a final product. First, let me show you one of Hicksfield popcorn's major strengths, and that is in the generation of ideas and keeping the characters, products, or lighting consistent across the scene. For example, if you want to come up with an ad campaign or with an Instagram image campaign in order to showcase these new headphones, by the way, these are AI images generated, so this is not a real headphone. So let's create a new space, upload a shot of a model. For example, this is an AI generated image of a singer that I made for my other video on how to create AI music. Feel free to check that out on my channel. And I want her to wear these headphones. I'll simply say create product showcase images of the singer in image number two wearing headphones in image number one. Show the singer in different scenes that showcase where the singer might wear the headphones. And I'll select six results and generate this for free. And here's a pro tip. If you have specific lighting in mind, you can either describe that in the prompt or you can show the lighting on a different model. For example, if we were to search for dramatic lighting, for example, the shot, we can just use this as a reference image just for the lighting and go back here, upload this as an additional source material. And you can specify that you want to use the lighting in one of the image that you generated. And let's try that out as well. So I tried this earlier and here's what it came up with. So without the dramatic lighting, here's what it came up with. This is a shot of the model showcasing the headphones in a busy city. Here we can see her in a coffee shop and here, here in the subway, it's a little bit less focused on the headphones, but it could be a good shot for a video for example, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second as well. And here is the shot of the model running in a park. As we can see here, the character consistency is phenomenal. She's wearing the same dress. This is the same white headphones with the same features. And here, once again, she's wearing the same dress, the same blonde curly hair. And overall, this is a really good use of character consistency with just this really simple prompt. As you can see here, the prompt is so simple and I just had to upload two reference images. If you want to be even more specific and you have a specific scene in mind, you can also upload that right there. For example, example, if we don't like that this person is in a city and we instead want these headphones to be used, for example, on the beach, we can add another image here. For example, let's take an image of a beach, upload this here. And this time we'll say the singer should wear these headphones on the beach, similar to the shot shown in image three. A few moments later. Here are other examples of the prompt we gave it. Here we can see the headphones in a city. Here we can see her in a recording studio, in a cafe. 
and another one in a cafe. Look at the character consistency across her face. It looks very similar and it looks like it's the same person across all of these different scenes. And this is one of the major takeaways. Hicksfield Popcorn is really good at having consistent characters across the same scene. It can generate different product shots super accurately and make the character consistent across the scenes so that you don't get weird inconsistent jumps in character from scene generation to scene generation. Even when the lighting is different, the character still has the same features. Here's the shot where we gave it the prompt to include the dramatic lighting. And once again, the character's face is the same, the headphones are the same, but this time it uses the dramatic lighting from an image that is with a different person. And it's able to copy that across the style. You can see the harsh lighting on the nose and forehead, but with the same character, the same dress and everything. This is super powerful if you want to create carousels for Instagram, or if you have an AI influencer that you want to use consistently across your channel, or if you're making video scenes. And I'll show you that in just a second as well. Let's compare that with Nano Banana. Here's how my previous workflow used to look like with using Nano Banana out of Gemini. And you'll see that the character consistency is just not going to be there. I'll just go to Gemini and I'll click on create image. I'll upload the same two files and I'll give it the same prompts that we have here. I'll click on generate. A few moments later. And here is one image with the woman wearing the headphones in different spaces, but you can see that the facial features aren't quite the same. She's not wearing the same dress. And overall, it's a white female woman, but she also doesn't have curly hair. But here we have corded headphones. Here we have corded headphones. Uh, here we don't have corded headphones. So overall, it's not able to match the same product similarity as well as the character consistency isn't quite there. And don't get me wrong, these images are already phenomenal. We can see different settings of the person where the light Lighting looks good, this looks super realistic and could be a real image. But if you're going for character consistency or product consistency, Hicksfield Popcorn is definitely able to perform better than that. Furthermore, let's try to generate more assets or more locations with the same model and the same product. And once again, we have corded headphones that kind of look weird here, but also the model does not look the same. She's not wearing the same dress, uh, even if we prompt it to. Let's try to prompt it to wear the same dress. And to be fair, let's even upload it again so that it remembers what it is. And here it wasn't able to keep the scenes consistent. It did have the image but it looked like it's just cropping her out. So to make a fair comparison, let's add the two images again so that Nano Banana knows exactly what we're talking about and see if it can handle that. In this case, I guess I just asked it for wearing the same thing and it was able to add the headphones on top of her. Um, the headphones look a little bit big in proportion, but overall, I think this is a pretty good job. So the learning here is that Nano Banana is still pretty good, but it takes some tweaking. And if you want to generate a consistent character across multiple scenes without you having to reprompt it a couple times, I'm definitely going to use Hicksfield Popcorn from now on over Nano Banana. And as I promised earlier, you're probably not only interested in creating storyboard images, but also how to create videos out of these. Let me show you another strength of Hicksfield where it integrates perfectly into AI image generating platforms such as Sora 2 or VO 3.1. So for this example, maybe let's use these images that we generated because they're nice and dramatic. So we can click on here and we can click on edit keyframe. So we can use this image and we can now click on animate. And you can use the Hicksfield video tool where you have all of these different AI video generators to your disposal. And you can use the image that we generated with Hicksfield popcorn first, give it an additional prompt and select the video model. For example, it's auto selected Minimax Hiluo 0.2. This one only costs us three credits, which is super affordable. But if you want to use some of the better products, for example, Google VO 3.1 fast, this will cost you a few more credits. We'll keep it on the single shot mode and click on generate. And I'll also show you how this would look with Sora 2. For example, I'm going to use Sora 2 Max here and I'll have the same shot right here. The duration is 12 seconds. Let's bump up the resolution and let's click on generate. And as you can see here with the same reference image here, and I'll also showcase one of the cheapest models right now, which only costs us seven credits, just so that we can compare the three different videos with one another. A few moments later. And let's see how this turned out. Experience sound like never before. This is really good. You can see that the lighting is consistent across the video and she's even giving us a voiceover. If we wanted to turn that off, we would need to include that in the prompt because we're using VO3. There's usually sound and sometimes voiceovers with it unless you tell it specifically not to include those. Let's watch that back one more time. sound like never before. I think that is really, really good. Sora 2, on the other hand, detected sensitive content because maybe the dress of the model is not covering enough of her body. Uh, so in this case, Sora 2 failed this generation. Here's the Hailua model. Yeah. 
And for a simple shot like this, considering that this only cost me four credits, this is actually already a pretty good shot, but I would need to add music and background sound and maybe a voiceover on my own. But considering this is only four credits, this is a pretty good shot using the reference image we had originally. Now, if we wanted to turn this into a full on video, I would go to popcorn and I would use each of these individual shots as my starting frames because they have consistent lighting in them. I would go in here and click on animate, a few moments later. And here are some of the shots. In this case, I used one 2.5 for these, but I would use different AI video generators to see which one turns out the best. So as a reminder, this is the original shot. Experience sound like never before. Then you would cut to the shot. Then I would cut to this shot. Then over to this shot. And then end with this final shot, just how we had it as the original sequence in the storyboard with Hicksfield Popcorn. What do you think about Hicksfield Popcorn or these videos that we just generated? Is this something that you would use? I want to hear your opinions in the comments. If you liked it, tell me exactly what. And if you didn't like it and you think that Nano Banana is still going to reign supreme, let me know too. I'm really curious to hear what you think. So why does any of this matter? And where does Hicksfield Popcorn fit into my image and video generation process? And is this the end of Nano Banana? Here's how I think about this. Hicksfield Popcorn is a super powerful AI storyboard generator. It can keep characters consistent. It can keep products consistent. It allows you to play around with lighting and come up with different scenes for different products or persons. And for those use cases, it's incredibly powerful. I can see myself using this on a daily basis for my businesses, generating storyboards or images for Instagram reels or for my businesses to showcase products or to generate AI videos. It still seems like it's struggling a bit with text. However, since it's integrated into the Hicksfield platform, I can use Nano Banana or other AI image generators that are better with text and I can edit that out and make up for those shortcomings. Lastly, I love the integrations not only with the other AI AI image generators, but also with the AI video tools, such as Sora 2 or VO3 or any of the ones that we showcased today. And because of that, it makes it super simple to come up with a storyboard for a video that I want to create and then generate it within the same platform without having to download the image and re-upload it and go and have 10 different tabs open at any given time. That said, how can you make money with this? There's three clear ways. One is to create product ads, either for your own brand or for other brands. You can reach out to them and generate videos for them and say, hey, if you like what you see, I can make more like this and put me on a retainer. Or you just sell those product commercials straight up. And a lot of brands are actually looking for more ad content that they can use on Meta or on YouTube in order to advertise their products. The second clear way is to use social media. For example, I created and uploaded completely AI generated videos and made over $1,000 doing that. The third way to make money with this is actually not to make money with it, but to save money. Since this platform allows you to produce content really quickly, it means that your iteration cycles go down and you don't need to hire a photographer, a videographer, or an editor in order to do all of these things anymore. You can just prompt the platform and it does it for you. And because of that, you can focus your time and your effort on other income generating opportunities and you don't need to pay other people to do this anymore. If any of this sounds interesting to you, I made a whole guide on how to create epic videos with AI where I go through the whole production process where I pr talk about how to prompt different AIs in order to get the best results. And I outline the best AI video generators for different parts of your production process. I also talk about other tools, for example, how to do sound design or how to do narration with AI as well. And you can check that out in the link in the description. On top of that, I also put together an ultimate guide to photorealistic AI images that creates really good images. And I've even ranked different AI models based on my personal preference and real world testing in order to see which one of these are best. And I also give you custom prompts in order to improve your AI image prompting overall. So a link to that is down in the description as well. If you made it until here, thank you so much. Feel free to subscribe to more content like this. I have a few videos coming up about some really powerful workflows that I'm using internally with my businesses. And if you like the storyboard generator with AI, I think you'll like this video as well. And if you've subscribed, I'll see you in the next one. Experience sound like never before.